I'm here with Steve Padilla. He is the lead vehicle dynamics engineer for the C8 Corvette. And he's just going to give a, just an overview of what we're looking at because we have this awesome cutaway here. And uh, just, what are we looking at, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're looking at the absence of an engine in the front of the car. That's the most obvious thing. Uh, so engine, center gravity, and everything is all combined with the transmission at the back of the car. This frees up a lot of open area here for a uh, very spacious frunk. Um, what you see here, a lot of people ask about what this is. This is actually the lift pump that powers the uh, front hydraulics lift system. So that's what gives you uh, clearance on uh, E60 equipped uh, Stingrays. Provisions in the structure for right-hand drive. So you flip the steering gear over and uh, reposition uh, the, the interior components so that you end up with a right-hand drive version of it. And this is electric power steering, of course. Uh, electric power steering, yeah. yep. So here's the motor. It's actually called an e, uh, APA or a, a, a parallel axis uh, electric power steering. The uh, eBoost module is uh, present in this whole entire What's configuration. eBoost e is the uh, brake system that's equipped on this car, uh, so it's the first time for a Corvette. Uh, it's where the hydraulic circuit um, is actually driven by the ABS, by a, by a brake pump. You're now no longer relying on a vacuum system to power the boost. Okay, so the front suspension and rear suspension are fairly traditional in, in terms of the s suspension. It's called a short long arm, or some people call it a double wishbone. Uh, so we have an A-arm upper with a L L-type arm lower, so you concentrate a lot of the handling uh, into the uh, bushing that's more in line with the um, ball joint. Uh, ride is mostly handled by motion of the uh, the control arm uh, with fore aft and, and uh, vertical motion. You've got a stabilizer bar that connects to the lower control arm via link. Does this does this what what suspension are we looking? Oh, which sorry. Yeah, that's suspension? one of the big uh, changes from. Uh, C7 to the mid-engine uh, configurations, we ended up going f uh, away from the transverse leaf springs to the coil coilover. So it's a coilover spring yep. instead of the transverse leaf. Springs. That's exactly right. Does this um, have, does this have a mag on it, or is this? Or uh, this one is actually a passive damper. Okay. Um, but the MR damper, you're gonna, you'll, you'll see a wire come out of there that that powers the magnetic coil and the, and the magnetorheological fluid. Okay. So, with reconfiguring it too, uh, um, if you kind of take a look at where the passenger is, traditionally in a front engine car, the passenger is going to be rearward, more closer to the rear wheels, and the center of gravity is going to be forward. So when you move the center of gravity back, it ends up being right about here, and about, I forget how many mills above ground. Um, probably 470 or something like that occur. We paid a lot of attention to increasing the uh, amount of available track room to get some more leg room in the, in the evolution of the platform. So the track is, I forget how many mils longer, but it's, it's on, a, on the order of 25, something like that. And we move to the back of the car. So you see the structure here for the rear suspension, again, coil over, um, but you gotta make room for the, the drive axles going through the the lower part, so the damper is actually hooked under uh, on top of the knuckle. So the transmission um, is housed here, uh, mated to the engine. Uh, so a couple of the considerations when you go to a mid-engine configuration like this is the engine moves, you have to reposition, the exhaust doesn't go down now and ends up coming up. Oh. So you can put the uh, engine down as low as you can to lower the CG. So that's why some mid-engine cars have the exhaust going up. Yep. Interesting. Yep. Cool. Um, and then you end up with an a accessory belt that's right behind your ear, so you have to pay special attention to the noise transmission through there. That's where we ended up with the thickness glass we have and uh, sound abatement uh, for that. Let's talk about the transmission itself because this is different than what was in the Corvette before. Yeah, it's a dual clutch transmission. Uh, so it's kind of an explanation of that at the beginning, but there's two shafts um, that are controlled by dual clutches, the odd gears on one shaft and the even gears on the other. Um, so you're able to almost seamlessly uh, transfer torque from one gear to the next without losing any, any uh, torque in, during that. And you can do it quicker than anybody could uh, switch a manual transmission.
Nice. And then in the rear suspension, again, double wishbone. Um, you can see that the stabilizer bar is efficiently attached directly to the knuckle. So that allows you to downsize the stabilizer bar, but still get a lot of e efficiency out of it. Spring rates um, are higher than you would traditionally see in, in uh, Corvettes of the past, and we think a lot of that is because we've been able to take, take advantage of some of the improvement in structure. So it allows us to get, still get a uh, good ride character out of the car, uh, excellent ride character out of the car actually, and then still have um, uh, springs to support uh, handling and, and uh, dynamic demands. And then uh, another big feature that not all mid-engine cars have is a decent sized trunk. So uh, trying to package for and making sure that there's enough available for uh, fitting the well, two sets of gar golf clubs or anything, yeah. The, that was uh, one of the challenges, I think, during the development of the vehicle. I, I, I wasn't directly involved in that part of it, but there was a lot of the meetings are dedicated on how to make sure and preserve that packaging area. Well, and also making so. sure everything you put in there doesn't yeah. roast. Right, yep. The sources of thermal energy now have kind of concentrated to one spot, so you gotta make sure you can get the airflow uh, from the sides and the bottom and the back of the car and the top of the car into the engine bay properly. Well, because I guess there's a trunk in the way. A lot, a lot of mid-engine cars yep. have all these vents and stuff in the back, but there's Great. a big trunk in the way, so you have to vent it somewhere. Yep. And those are things, again, that you learn, again, with the progression of the development vehicles as we see here. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks, Steve. Yep. Thank you. See you at Corvette. Have a good skin.